Well, we continue our conversation with Congressman Ron Paul. We all we all know his concerns about our liberties, but how does that tie in with national security? You know the Ben Franklin quote, which roughly says, if you give up liberty for security, you deserve neither. So what is our nation's role, whether it is in Afghanistan or the TSA body searches at your local airport? Let's dive into these issues, TSA and national security with Congressman Ron Paul. You've spoken out on this many times. Is the business about security at our airports, the travel, the TSA? We want, I do this on my radio show all the time, Congressman, and people say, but I want to know that everybody on the plane with me, you know, is a good person. And at the same time, they don't want to be groped by the TSA. So are, are we not thinking right? Are, is the TSA not using the, the proper approach? I know you're, you're not happy yeah. about it. No, but, but the philosophy of who's supposed to assure us the people next to us are safe, that's wrong. Depend on the bureaucrats to do it. I mean, these aren't the most reputable people. Sometimes they themselves get into trouble. And for TS agents to do things to us at airports that you and I can't do, we'd be arrested if we did this. And the mill people overlook this. I mean, it is astounding. But the basic principle is who's responsible for safety on private property? The federal government was very much involved before 9-11, did nothing to help. As a matter of fact, all the rules encouraged it. There weren't allowed to be guns on the airplane, and you weren't allowed to oppose hijackers. And it was a mess. So we set the stage for 9-11. But today, we have a bunch of bureaucrats pretending that they can replace sound judgment by, by owners. So the responsibility should be on the airlines, just as they are at the chemical plants and, and the driver, these uh, armored trucks hauling around money. It's the ownership that should do this, and the responsibility should be on the airlines, and uh, they, would, they would do a much better job because I don't believe for a minute the TSA makes us safer, and they consume a lot of money. And it's a false illusion that if you give up your freedoms that you're going to be safer. We give up our freedoms, and we aren't safer. So, but, uh, but, but, if, but if I have a choice of airline A or airline B, and they're going to provide the security... Uh, you're saying that I'm their customer, I'm not a criminal, so they're going to treat me like a customer, but at the same time they're going to do a good job of making sure that I'm sure. not carrying something wrong? It's the government that I don't want to yield to and have them take a picture of my eyeball and make, take care of my fingerprints and everything else. But in, with modern technology, the airlines can identify the passenger. Frequent flyers, anyway, could be treated differently. Pilots should be treated differently. They shouldn't go through the same lines. It isn't that difficult. It's this uh, uh, effort to assume that the government is to be there and that you're to be submissive. And that's the way everything you look at, whether it's in economic policy or social policy, be submissive. Edu uh, you know, uh, medical care, be submissive. Everybody's there. Nobody's allowed to opt out. So submissiveness is what they're after. But there's, there's a good argument private sources can protect us better than the government because uh, so far the government hasn't done a very good job uh, right. of protecting us at all. And, and last question about just national security. I know that you've been outspoken about the Iraq war, the Afghanistan war. Uh, how do you propose keeping us safe without being isolationist if you don't want our troops in all these different hotbeds of the, around the world? No, I, don't, I never use the word isolation. I use non-intervention. That means bring the troops home and don't incite those individuals who would like to be left alone and they join the Taliban or the Al-Qaeda because they resent us bombing them and killing civilians and occupying their lands and building medic, uh, military bases on their land. That's what incites people to want to do us harm. Uh, so I would say everything we do over there is nothing more than endangering us even more. This was very clear, you know, after 9-11, with the 9-11 Commission, one of the major things that really bugged bin Laden was that military base in, in Saudi Arabia. And our government recognized it, said it was true, and they took it down. But we built many, many more since then. So not being there uh, doesn't mean you're an isolationist. I believe in free trade and maximum amount of travel and dealing with people. I'm, I'm much happier with the way we work with China than uh, was when I was in high school when we were fighting and killing each other. I like it much better with Vietnam when we work with them and trade and they become capitalistic than when I was in the Air Force for five years in the 60s and we walked away, we lost that war. 
it, we cannot, we win a lot more with uh, peaceful negotiations than we do with these n wars that are undeclared and nobody knows who's, who's the real enemy and when the war is over and now we're involved in about five of them right now and we're flat out broke. So actually I'm winning this argument, not so much they're, they're agreeing with my uh, philosophy of foreign policy, but everybody knows we're flat out broke and we ought to change our ways. All right, for supporters? They want to reach you, they want to contact you, they want to read your positions. What's your website? RonPaul2012.com. RonPaul2012.com. Congressman Paul, always good to see you. Thanks so much for being on the show.